A fine assortment of baked goods. A lovely treat for those who enjoy such things. Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? Yes, I'd like to buy a cake. Wonderful. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Curses. I have no more money. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry. I, I can't give them away for free. The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? This is De Plancy. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. De Plancy. Likewise, pet. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. De Plancy. About me? <laughs> what would you possibly want to know about me? I have been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not find better in the entire county. What can you tell me about St. Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? It's been standing here since the 12th century. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. The door is open if you'd like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the parish register. He might be able to help you. What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. In memory of Peter Black. In memory of George Paxton. In memory of William Ager. In memory of Barnaby Tillett. In memory of Mabel Hurst. In memory of Percival Roach. In memory of Benjamin Garkham. In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. In memory of Millicent Smith. In memory of Henry Crozier. Excuse me, do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? You help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of course, thank you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Samuel Bryden. Death is only a shadow across the path to heaven. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife, and sister. Today, she dances with angels. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. William Paxton, modest and gentle of heart. Samuel Bryden, 
death is only a shadow across the path to heaven. Goodness me, look at these box pews. I've never seen any as tall as that before. Most unusual architecture, even for the Normans. Hmm, someone has left a necklace hanging here. A silver cross, sterling by the look of it. Maybe I can reunite it with its owner. Locked. Locked as well. I think they all might be. I've no time for such things. A memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. It's locked. Going near it. It smells disgusting. Ouch! The broken lens is extremely sharp. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. This should work. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I shall do as you ask, Father. Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. What ails you, Father Roach? I... I just ate a rotten berry, that's all. I like to pick blackberries for my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. I wish we had met in different circumstances. Are you from Bewley originally? I was born in our very own St Edmunds. It's quite the story. Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. And lo... Did her waters break right there and then in that pew? One could say that you were born into your role, Father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. St Edmund's is a fine building. Thank you for saying so. It's hard work keeping her in good shape, but our congregation is always willing to lend a hand in the Lord's name. What is it like being the vicar here? 
Every day is a blessing, my child. I have a great love for our parish, and the Lord looks after us. What about your congregation? Numbers have fallen over the years, I must say. But those that remain are faithful and full of his spirit. I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register? No need. I remember it now. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you aided me, so... Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I can't say I've heard of it. It's supposedly a famous local landmark. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. What can you tell me about Bewley? It's a quiet town. The railway line, which I presume you arrived by, is the only news of note we've had here for years. I've heard the new station has received a mixed reaction. <laughs> I've heard many a debate, it's true. But my role is not to adjudicate on that matter. I'm very busy in my own work, you see. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. I have no desire to go rooting about in there. I shall see you later this evening, gents. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. Hello, sir. A pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. Wait! Some nerve. Lady, you're blushing. I most certainly am not. Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Says who? Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, I. You're not from round here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. These are his woods? Aye, his lordship owns most of the land round Beoli. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Bewley? Aye, not far away. But his lordship doesn't like questions. Or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. If you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We need the timber for the restoration work. How intriguing. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Hello there, my name's Thomasina. Yeah? How are you? Go away! 
Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. What do you know about Lord Panswick? I heard he owns the whole county. Have you met him? No. He lives out on the moors somewhere. But everyone does what he tells them to. Why's that? Because he has a lot of money. Goodbye. Good day, little one. What's your name? Hello, miss. I'm Jane and this is my brother Wally. Lovely to meet you. I'm Thomasina. I'd introduce you to my dolls, but they're drying out at the moment. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was their bath day. Wally doesn't say much. He's mardy with me because he's bored, miss. He thinks he's too old to play with dolls. I see. Where are your parents? They are picking apples from the big tree in our yard. Daddy and I sell them at the market. That sounds nice. But they don't mind us playing at the beck, as long as we don't touch the Ammon's horn. What is the Ammon's horn? It's over there on that rock. Do you mean the fossil? It's the Ammon's horn. Daddy said we should never touch it. It will make the god angry. What god? Ammon, of course. How wonderful! I'll be sure not to touch it. I wouldn't want to anger the gods. Sensible. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... Jane! No, miss. Are you sure? I swear. Goodbye. Bye, miss. It's bad luck to touch the Ammon's horn. I'm serious. Uh, fine. Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilised Ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. The water is icy cold. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. They aren't mine to take. Damp rag dolls have been laid out to dry in the dreary sun. I don't think anyone is home. Bugger off! Ah, the unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plough and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. Sorry? You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's... All a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning, with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. About last night... What were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... 
Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I. No, no, I, I know nought about him. No, nought about Leonard Shoulder. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Look, what would I gain from lying to you? I just wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. Aye. I don't remember out. Hmm. About last night. You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. Well, you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I A sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I. Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around my skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. So, you work here? Aye. Buley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow, I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Oh, you've heard of his lordship, then? Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children, hires young men to work his land. He's well-liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tillett. Well, we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks after us, provided we leave him alone. I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Good grief! But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. Farewell for now. Tara.